Okay, so this is just a quick tutorial basically uh, with an introduction to object oriented programming in Java. Uh, for this tutorial, I will be using Eclipse, and I'm assuming that you have some basic knowledge of how to program in Java and can write a simple script or program uh, to do some basic stuff. So uh, we're going to open up Eclipse or whatever IDE you prefer to use and I'll wait for it to load. It shouldn't take too long. And once it's loaded we're going to create a new um, Java, what's it called, a Java thing. Anyway, when your Eclipse loads it should come up like this. Close that, Java project. and then we put in the name of our project. Um, in this basic tutorial I'm just going to show you how to do a uh, register, so um, for like a school or something um, you might want to create a register of um, people or students, so register tutorial, um, so that's what it's going to be called uh, yeah, it uses the job perspective, that's fine. Switch over to that now. And so then we've got that. Okay, I'm going to go full screen on this. And there we go. Mm, a bit bright, but it's okay. Um, and then we're going to open this out. And just because of good Java practices, we don't, <coughs> sorry. We don't want to um, do any programming inside the SRC folder, source folder. So we're going to right click and create a new package and I'm going to call this one register. So then uh, we're going to create a new class which is going to be where our programs run from and it's going to be um, just like a normal one with public static void main string arguments um, and that's going to be, uh, I'm going to call that run register. Okay. And we'll add the public static void main uh, stubs into it. So now we've got run register and that's fine for now. Um, so object oriented programming in Java is pretty simple I'd say. Um, basically an object is sort of like a stamp. Um, you can have one object and from that one object you can make as many of that thing that you want. So we're going to make a student object and that's easy. We just right click here and we go new class and we're going to call it student. So once we've got the student, that's basically got a student object already. We're going to create what's called a constructor. A constructor is what a method that you call in order to create a new student. So we're going to have public student. The method doesn't need a name, it's just student. Okay. And then we're going to think about what parameters we need to pass over. Before we do that, we're going to go up here and put them in here. Um, so it's best to use something called encapsulation, which means that your variables can only be accessed by that object. So you can't change the student's name outside of the student object. Um, so something like a name won't be changed once it's set, hopefully. So we'll do something like private final. Final means that it's never going to change. And then student name. Okay, so uh, yeah, we need to put a string. Private final string student name. And there it's saying the blank field student name may not have been initialized. So we're going to fix that later. Uh, we're going to think again what more things the student might have. So you have um, private uh, integer uh, student age, and that will be set in our constructor method. In the constructor method, it basically constructs the object. So we're going to pass over a name and an age. That's all I'll use for now. Um, so we have. Uh, we want it to take in a string name, we also want it to take in an int age. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to call this. So that means this means in this object. So this reference of this object. So it's always better to use this dot if you're editing something um, in an object-oriented manner. Uh, if you were using public static uh, student, that wouldn't work because static means it doesn't change no matter what. So this dot student name equals name, so what we've just passed over to it, and this dot student age equals age. So then we've already set the student name and the student age. So they can't be accessed from anything else because they're set to private. If they were set to public, Anywhere could access them, so run register would be able to access the student name and also the student age, but we don't want that because then it might be able to change them. So what we've done here is now we can create um, a getter and setter method uh, for student age. So um, we'll say uh, public, and it's going to return an integer. So return int and uh, get age. It doesn't need any parameters, and then we can return if I can spell. Uh, this dot student age and that's that you can also create a setter um, but I don't in this we aren't going to show so we aren't going to um, set the age we're just going to create a simple register of students okay and now we'll also need to make something so we can get the student name public string because it's going to return a string uh, get student name and we're going to return this again dot student name so that's easy peasy now um, and then save that and we can head on over to our run register again and start creating the actual register now we've got our student object so if you've used arrays before, you'll probably know that you can declare an array of something like an integer by going integer uh, I think it's like this, I really can't remember it before. Uh, new integer eight. I think that's how you'd do it. Oh yeah, it's like that. So yeah, that's how you declare an array. I haven't programmed in ages. Just thought I'd do these tutorials because it's fun. Um, so yeah, that's how you do it with an integer. So that integer here that you can see is um, it's basically an object. So we can change this for student and then student again, and we've got an array now which can contain. 10 students. So um, this we're not going to call it array, we're going to call it register. Um, and for every, we're going to want to put students in the register to begin with. Um, so you could write a program to um, allow someone to input something uh, into that. But for now, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to put them in myself and then print out the values for each student in the list. Okay, so, well in the array, not a list. Um, so now we're going to say register, oh god if I can spell, uh, and then we're going to need, um, uh, sorry, we're going to need an index for the register, so we've got 0 to 9 because that's 10, um, because we always start, start counting from 0 in um, in programming normally. Um, so register 0 equals, and we're going to make a new student. And then if you're in Eclipse, it should prompt you. But yeah, it'll tell you uh, student string name and in age. So we're going to make a new student uh, called Billy and with an age 19. And um, now we've got him in the register, we can add another one, register 1 equals new student Joe, 
and with an age of 17, not 7, 17. Um, so yeah, and now we can leap through all of the um, register entries. So we're going to use an enhanced for loop. If you haven't seen an enhanced for loop, I'll walk you through it. Um, so that means it's like a for loop, but you say for each um, student uh, s inside the array or list uh, register. Okay, and uh, now we're going to check that the student isn't null, so it has been set. So if s is not equal to null, then we are want, going to want to system dot out dot print ln so print line uh, the student's name is and we're also going to want to add on their name so we can say s dot git student name and then we can add on to that as well and they are and then we add their age onto it. So that's basically a simple register using arrays and student objects. Um, make sure I'll upload the program, well this code, and we'll develop from here. This is going to be the only time that I upload the code from it. Uh, all the other tutorials that follow after this you're going to need to download, uh, sorry, create it yourself and um, embellish on it. Um, I think this is going to be like uh, starting from basics, um, making a student register, and we're going to work our way up and make it a pretty good register. But if we run this, obviously, because I want to check it works, uh, you can say the student's name is Billy and they are 19. The student's name is Joe and they are 17. So it leaps through them all, and if it's not null, it's going to output that. Uh, but if we didn't have the null checker, then I'm not sure what happened. Probably just say null, wouldn't it? Yeah, it throws a null pointer exception because it's not been set. Um, so yeah, that's that's cool. Um, see you next tutorial. If you liked the video, like it and subscribe. Thank you.